Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we will be comparing functions in different formats. You can see I have tables and lists and graphs behind me there. We will be comparing functions in different formats. Before we can get to actually comparing functions, we need to be able to do a couple of things. One, we need to be able to find the slope, which is the rate of change or the consistent constant rate of change. And we need to be able to find slope when we're given graphs, equations, tables, or points. We need to be able to graph a function if we're given a table, equation, or a list of ordered pairs. And we're, we also need to know how to get a list of ordered pairs if we're given a graph, a table, or an equation. And these skills are mainly going to be shown in the sample questions, but I am going to do one thing first. I am going to talk about slope or the rate of change because it is very important that we understand how to do that. So I'm going to show how to find slope when you're given a graph equation or a table. Let's start off with a list of numbers. If you're given a list of numbers and you're asked to find the slope or you need to find the slope, you can take any one of these numbers or any two of these ordered pairs and put them into this slope equation. The slope equation basically is that we have a y, one ordered pair, an x and y value, and we put x1 and y1 in for those values. Then we take a separate num, um, ordered pair. In this case, I'm going to use 4 and 4 as my ordered pair number 2, and so I'll put in x2 and y2 into the equation here. And you'll see me doing this a lot. I'm going to use the slope equation a lot. So I hope that we understand how to do that and where those numbers came from. Again, you can see my x value from x and y, point number 1. I'm using x and y. And for my second point, I've picked 4, 4 as my second point to substitute in for x2 and y2. When we subtract, we get 3 over 3, so our slope for this set of numbers is 1. That's the consistent slope, the consistent increase. Um, and that will be how you find the slope or the rate of change when you're given a list of numbers. Sometimes you won't be given a list of numbers, you'll be given a graph. When you're given a graph, hopefully a couple of those points are pretty obvious on the graph. In this case, I have three points that stand out. The point negative 2, positive 5. I also have a point over there, positive 6, negative 1. And I have another point, 2, 2. Um, you can pick any of these points. Just make sure to label one of them as point 1 and one of them as point 2 so that when you use the slope equation I have listed, it will be easier for you to keep them straight. So I'm going to put in my y value from point number 2. So you see here, this is point number 2. That's my y value from point number 2. That's going to go in for y2, negative 1. My y value from point number 1 is 5, so that's going to go in here in my equation. So on the top of there, I have negative 1 minus 5. On the denominator, I have my x value from point number 2, which is 6 minus my x value from point number 1, so it's minus negative 2. Notice the negatives remain, and the subtraction also remains. Those are important points. So let's go ahead and look at this. We have negative 6 on the top, and then on the bottom we have 6 minus negative 2, which becomes 6 plus 2, or in other words, 8. So my slope is negative 6 over 8. We reduce that down to lowest terms, and we get an overall slope of negative 3 over 4. In other words, it goes down 3 for every 4 it goes forward. And you can see that that is a consistent number. It goes down 3 over 4, down 3 over 4. Using the slope equation, we can calculate that each time. The other way that we are going to look at finding slope is here with when you're given an equation. The easiest way to find it is just to look at the number in front of x. In this case, it's 2 thirds. It's a fraction. But any number in front of x, when you have the equation written in this format, is the slope. So if you're given the, an equation and it's not in this format, just set it up. Rearrange it so that you have y on the left 
something times x here and then a number left over. This is the slope intercept form of a line and you can always look at slope. Now, let's say you don't trust that and you want to do it the harder way. That's fine. Some people like doing things the hard way. The hard way is to actually pick two points and then use that slope equation that we've, we've shown several times. So here is the what we're going to do. I'm going to pick the point 0 and 3 for my x value. I'll solve for my y value and then I'll use the slope equation. So I substitute 0 into my equation. 2 thirds times 0 is 0 and my y value would be negative 14. So I'll plug that into my table. Now I'm going to put the number 3 into this equation. 2 thirds times 3 equals 2. 2 minus 14 is equal to negative 12. So now I have two points. I have the point 0, negative 14, and the point 3, negative 12. So now I can actually plug those into my slope equation, which I'm glad we're able to practice with. This is good practice. Plug those numbers into my slope equation. My first point, x1, y1, is going to be 0, negative 14. My second point, x2, y2, is 3, negative 12. So my equation will look like this. I'll go ahead and switch that minus negative into being a positive and solve to get my slope of 2 thirds. Now, I like the easier way. This is just a proof to show that doing it the harder way will get you the exact same answer. But basically, just write down the number in front of x. Now, we've spent a lot of time finding slope, and the reason for that is that almost all questions that are asking you to compare functions will ask you to compare functions that look different and functions that have, it'll ask you about the slope. So here are four different ways that we might see a function. You might see it as a list of ordered pairs. You might see it as a table, as an equation, or as a graph. And that's fine. Any of these you can work with because now you can find the slope from pretty much any of these. Let's look at a couple of sample questions and then we'll finish things off. First off, I like to compare apples to apples. When I'm asked to compare two functions and they're given in different formats, I change them so that they have the same format. That's my way of doing it. That way I can work with it a little bit better. So if I'm asked to compare this equation, y equals 4x minus 1, and this table, x and the function of x, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a second table. And I'm going to solve for each of those so that I can get something that is comparable. I'm going to solve my y value equals 4 times my x value minus 1. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 minus 1 is 3. Let's plug that into the equation. Let's solve for my value of 2. I'm basically filling in a table of values here for my function um, for, of 4x four minus 1. So I'm going to multiply 4 times 2 and subtract 1. I'm going to multiply 4 times 3 and subtract 1. I'm going to multiply 4 times 4 and subtract 1. I'm going to multiply, this is getting repetitive, 4 times 5, and I'm going to subtract 1 until I have that entire table filled in. Now that I have two comparable things, I can actually look at them and make some comparisons. First off, they intersect at the point 1, 3. That's a piece of information you might be asked about. The green rate of change, or the slope for the green one, is 4. We know that for a couple of reasons. One, it increases by 4 every time our x value increases just by 1. Look at that, it's a consistent increase of 4. Also, the number right in front of x is 4, so we know that the rate of change, or the slope, is 4. For my blue one, it increases by 1, every, or by 2, I'm sorry, every time my x values increase by 1. So the slope is 2. Both have a positive slope. I like the color blue better. Depends what we're asked when we're asked to compare functions, but most questions will ask about the slope and possibly about the intersect um, when you're asked to compare them. Let's do another question. When you're asked to compare an equation to a list of numbers, it's sometimes helpful to go ahead and graph them. So I've graphed my list of numbers. This list of numbers should look familiar to us. We used it at the beginning. My equation, I'm going to graph that. Now, 
This is the slope intercept form of a line. So I know my slope is negative 2. It's the number right in front of x. I don't need to prove that anymore. Slope is negative 2. The other piece of information is that my y-intercept is that number over here. So my y-intercept is 3. In other words, it crosses the y-axis right there at the point 0, 3. My slope is negative 2, so I go down 2 and over 1. Down 2, over 1. Now I can draw a line through those points. After graphing the equation and the list of points, you can make some interesting comparisons similar to what we did before. They intersect at the point 1, 1. The green has a slope of negative 2. The blue has a slope of positive 1. Um, it's a positive slope versus a negative slope. You can see that when you look at them. And I like the color green better. Whatever you're asked to compare, you can compare when you're graphing them. Again, take an equation and a list and put them both on the same graph. That way you can compare apples to apples. The Common Core Anchor and PA Eligible content is listed below here. Notice the example questions very similar to the questions that we went over together. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.